I hated to ask, but could I crash at your place for a few days? Dad had been kicked out of the family home by my sisters and mom, and now he stood at my doorstep. Seeing Dad, who had always been so strong, talk about reaching his limit, I blamed myself. I'm sorry, Dad, I said trying to apologize for my inability to help alleviate his suffering. In that moment, as I struggled with my guilt, my husband Ethan spoke up. Let's live with your father-in-law. Are you sure? I turned to Ethan, surprise evident in my voice. Dad, too, could barely hide his shock, his eyes wide open. My name is Emily, and I'm 26 years old. Ethan and I started dating in college, and we got married two years ago. Our days are filled with a fulfilling work-life balance. Ethan is my best supporter, always by my side. I never thought I'd find someone who gives me such confidence, let alone marry them. As the youngest of three sisters, I grew up in an environment where I could never go against my mom and my sisters. I was always the last one in line for attention from mom, and also the lowest in rank among my sisters. Every time I voiced an opinion, sharp words would come flying back at me. Over time, I stopped expressing myself and started to suppress my feelings. I bore the treatment of being treated like a servant by my mom and my sisters without complaining. I wanted a boy. When I found out you were another girl, I was so disgusted. Grace and Ashley are enough for girls. You're an unwanted child, and yet here you are in this house. If you want to stay here, you have to work. Mom often belittled me like this. Even if you tell me that, how many times have I swallowed my words, the ones I wanted to say back to her? By the time I entered elementary school, I was in charge of most of the household chores, from preparing meals and doing laundry to getting the bath ready. People around me would praise me, saying, that's impressive, or, you're so responsible. But I only found joy in that at first. It's a given that you do all these things, Mom would say, with no words of thanks or praise. Instead, I was constantly being reprimanded for my cooking or the way I folded the laundry. The one who kept me going through all this was Dad. Unlike Mom and my sisters, Dad loved me and respected me. As the only man in the family, Dad was not well liked by Mom and my sisters, and his power within the family was as low as mine. But he always stood up for me. I'm sorry, Emily. You always have to put up with so much. If only we could all live in harmony. Dad would often hold me tight and say these things. Despite his early mornings and late nights for work, Dad would always spend his days off with me, fulfilling Mom and my sister's demands together. And he always listened to my feelings and accepted my words. But my mom and her cohorts didn't seem to like that. There's no one to protect you today, they'd tell me, pushing more chores onto me. They'd hurl harsh words at Dad too, such as, For a man, low income. And my sisters would follow their lead, laughing and saying, Disgusting. And don't open your mouth. So no matter how much Dad tried to be a pillar of support, I was becoming increasingly frail. Noticing my distress, Dad said something to me when I entered high school. Emily, study as much as you can, then go to college, leave this house, and live on your own. You, Emily, have so many possibilities. There's no need to endure and stay in this house forever. I want you to live your life, my father urged me. At his words, I felt both elated and anxious. At the time, my eldest sister Grace, six years older than me, was attending a private university, and Ashley, four years older, was at a vocational school. Mom would often ridicule Dad for his low income and tell me, We're poor because he doesn't bring in money, so you should start working once you graduate from high school. Because of this, I believed our family was financially struggling. Despite that, I worried if Dad was pushing himself too hard by telling me to go to college and live on my own. But Dad insisted, There's no need to worry about money. I feel responsible for making you suffer so much. That's why I don't want you to endure any longer. Dad, I said, this is a request from your father. You don't have to worry about anything. Just go to the university you want, study what you want, find what you love to do. I want you to lead a happy life to make up for the hardship you've been through. I could feel his strong resolve as he gripped my shoulder, his eyes moist with tears. From then on, I devoted myself to the studies I had neglected, juggling the overbearing instructions from my mom and sisters. I spent all my remaining time studying at my desk. My hard work paid off, and I was accepted into a university. Dad and I embraced each other, sharing the joy of my acceptance. I kept it a secret from Mom and my sisters until the last minute, only announcing my plans to go to college and live alone on the day I was moving. At that time, Grace had already moved out and was living on her own. 
leaving only Mom and Ashley at home who showered me with shouts of rage. I endured their harsh words until the end, finally breaking free from them. I kept my new mobile phone, a gift from Dad, a secret, not telling them which university I was going to or where I was going to live. Though I stayed in touch with Dad, I started a life without any involvement with my mom or my sisters. But just because I escaped from them didn't mean my university life was smooth sailing. I wasn't used to speaking my mind, and as a timid person, I was somewhat invisible in my department, unable to make friends. Then Ethan reached out to me. What do you think, Emily? I was surprised when Ethan, the bright and central figure of the group, spoke to me. I was already uncomfortable speaking in front of people, and being put on the spot left me speechless. But Ethan pressed me. You have thoughts, right? Share them. We won't know unless you say something, he said. Initially, I thought of Ethan as pushy and inconsiderate. But as time passed, I came to see the kindness in Ethan, how he respected people's opinions. Thanks to Ethan, I started to make friends. Before long, I found myself drawn to him, and by our third year, our relationship had progressed to dating. When I started dating Ethan, Dad excitedly congratulated us. And when I found a job, when Ethan and I decided to move in together, and when we decided to get married, Dad celebrated my happiness as if it was his own. But I had always been worried about Dad. Since starting university, I hadn't been home and hadn't seen Dad even once. We stayed in touch, but I was still concerned. Dad was living at that place with Mom and the others. I had no doubt he was still enduring snide comments from Mom and Ashley, still spending his days under their domineering instructions. Dad, I'm happy today because of you. Back then, I was powerless and always needed your help. But things have changed. I'm working now, and I'm married. I have someone who supports me, so now it's my turn to help you. Please let me know if you're in any trouble. I told him I announced my marriage, having learned the importance of expressing my feelings to others since being with Ethan. I was finally able to put into words why I had never been able to tell Dad before. Thank you, Dad replied, but until now, two years later, Dad never asked me for help. Furthermore, recently, I heard that Grace, who was supposed to be living alone, quit her job and returned to her parents' house. My worry for Dad had only increased. Then, one day, the doorbell rang just as I was confiding in Ethan about how worried I was about Dad. December was almost over, and even though it wasn't even 4 p.m., it was already getting dark outside. We had no scheduled deliveries, so we were surprised when we looked at the screen of the intercom. The person shown by the camera was none other than Dad. I rushed to the front door and opened it, seeing Dad for the first time in eight years. His cheeks were hollowed out, and there was more white than black in his hair. He looked visibly unwell. I instinctively knew that his sudden visit without any notice wasn't for a casual reason. Dad, what's happened? Please come inside. It must be cold outside, I said concerned. Dad was wearing trousers and a long sleeve shirt, even in December. He seemed too thin, and I wondered why he would be outside dressed like that. But the reason was revealed from Dad's mouth. Dad was kicked out of the house by Mom and the others, he said, his voice heavy with sadness. He told me to go buy dessert, so I went to the nearby convenience store, but when I came back, the house was locked. I asked them to open up, but they told me not to come back and didn't let me in. What? I exclaimed, shocked by what I was hearing. I left the house without my phone or jacket, but I waited for several hours, and they didn't seem to let me in. Dad added, rubbing his cold body as he told us about what happened that day. I quickly made some hot tea and gave it to Dad. He held the cup of tea with both hands to warm up and muttered softly, I might not be able to go back to that house again. Why? I asked, concerned. Ever since Grace came back, Mom and the others' attitude got even worse. I was feeling at my limits too, and then they did this to me. I don't even have the energy to go back. I think I should look for a monthly apartment and think about what to do in the future, Dad explained. I'm sorry, but could I stay here for a few days? I'll leave as soon as I find an apartment, he added, his voice filled with weariness. I was worried, but I hadn't imagined it was this bad. Dad, who never complained before, was talking about his limits. I'm sorry, Dad. I began ready to apologize for knowing about his troubles and not being able to do anything when Ethan spoke up. Let's live with your father. Ethan raised his voice. Are you sure? I turned to my husband in surprise. Dad, too, 
unable to hide his surprise, opened his eyes wide. Sorry for being blunt, especially since we just met, but your father-in-law doesn't look too healthy. I think it would be best if we lived together to help him recover. Everything else can be figured out later, of course, only if he's okay with this, Ethan explained. Ethan's suggestion left Dad and me with nothing but gratitude, and so our new life as a trio began. Just a few days after Dad moved in, our doorbell rang again. All three of us were stunned by the figures displayed on the intercom screen. Mom and my sisters were standing there. Why here? I whispered, shocked and bitter past memories making my breath hitch. But I had to face them. I didn't know what they would do next, and panic set in. I opened the door, and before me stood my mother, flanked by Grace and Ashley. Wow, I didn't expect you to be living in such a fancy place. I thought you were scraping by in some run-down apartment, Mom remarked, her tone dripping with condescension. Hearing her voice after such a long time, all I could feel was resentment. Why are you here? I asked, trying to keep my tone steady despite the turmoil brewing within me. Your father's mobile had your address in it. I had no idea Emily even had a mobile phone. Why would you give him your contact info but not us? Are you honoring the wrong person? Grace interjected arrogantly, looking down at me, just as she always did. After Mom's words, seeing Grace like this, Mom smiled, satisfied, and spoke again. Well, never mind. Is your father here? We're having some trouble without him, she said that there were no signs of actual distress on their faces. All three of them were smirking. In trouble? But you're the ones who kicked him out, I retorted, my irritation mounting with each word. You've become quite sassy, haven't you? So is he here? Move aside, Mom demanded, her typical overbearing tone evident in her condescending remarks about me. No, I responded firmly, fueled by Ethan's support and my own newfound strength. It would have been impossible in the past, but I had changed, all thanks to Ethan. Mom's irritation became apparent as she raised her voice. When did I ever give you permission to talk back? Just move. You can't even listen to what I say. I'm not the same person I used to be. I won't be pushed around by you, Mom. I refused firmly, Ethan coming up beside me, trying to shoo Mom and the others away. Despite our efforts, Mom and her group wouldn't leave. We repeated move and no until, tired of the ordeal or maybe having given up, Mom was the one to break first. That's enough. I don't want to hear any more from you. If you won't move, can you at least let us know when the money will be deposited in our account? It's really annoying that all you can do is put money in, and you can't even do that, Mom said, her words leaving me speechless. How did she think she's been able to live without working? My anger reached its peak. From now on, Dad will be living with us. Dad and I will no longer be pushed around by you guys. Please divorce Dad and stop causing him pain. I declared, unable to hold back my words any longer. But the response from my mom was something I hadn't anticipated. I hadn't anticipated mom's reaction. Don't make it sound like I'm the bad guy. I've been kind enough to stay as a family with a man like him, who is low income and can't do a thing. You should be thanking me, mom said, her words cutting deep. What? I gasped, stunned by her audacity. You're just like your dad, a low income loser acting high and mighty. But in the end, all you're doing is licking each other's wounds. Mom continued, her tone dripping with disdain. I felt like I was about to lose control. At Mom's words, I was on the verge of raising my voice, of lashing out. But then my husband spoke up. Emily works hard. She's a supervisor, earning a decent wage. I'd appreciate it if he didn't belittle us with comments about licking wounds. Ethan intervened, his voice firm. Mom retorted, don't you dare talk back to me. You're an outsider, so stay quiet. That's when Dad, who should have been in the living room, was suddenly at my side, addressing Mom. I've heard enough. We can't impose on Emily and Ethan anymore. Let's get a divorce, Dad declared, surprising everyone. Dad, I exclaimed, shocked by his sudden proclamation. But my sisters chimed in with approval. That's fine, that's fine. We don't need a creepy guy like you, one of them called out. Encouraged by my sisters, Mom agreed, that's fine by me. I was dumbfounded by how quickly things had been resolved, but the peace didn't last long. But there's one condition. Hand over that house to me, then I'll give you your divorce. Mom laid out her demand, revealing her greed. I couldn't believe it. How greedy could this woman be? But Dad quickly agreed to Mom's demand. Dad, are you sure? 
I asked, shocked by his compliance. If that's all it takes to get a divorce, it's a small price to pay, Dad replied, smiling at me reassuringly before turning back to Mom with a serious expression. I'll do as you ask. Leave for today. I'll come over tomorrow. With that, Dad sent Mom and my sisters home. They continued to belittle me until the end. But I didn't care. I felt guilty for pushing for a divorce and causing Dad to lose his home. But Dad patted my shoulder reassuringly. It's not your fault, Emily. In fact, I'm glad you spoke up, he said. The next day, Dad went back home one last time with the divorce papers. He made Mom fill out the divorce application, handled some paperwork, and packed his belongings. When Dad returned from our family home, he looked somehow lighter. It was sad to see the house go to Mom and my sisters, but if Dad felt relieved, I was okay with it. A few months later, Dad told me what had happened to Mom and my sisters. They had taken the family home as part of the divorce settlement and planned to live lavishly by selling it. However, the house was old and the location wasn't great. They couldn't sell the house or land for much, and demolition costs ate into the proceeds. In the end, they were left with almost nothing. Now without a home or savings, Mom didn't work, and neither did Grace or Ashley have stable jobs. And with Dad gone, the same Dad they ridiculed for his low-income status while they leaned on him for living expenses, the trio found themselves in dire straits. They tried seeking help and showed up at our house several times, but we never opened the door to them. Still, they refused to give up, causing commotion at the front porch. I finally had to tell them through the intercom, if you make any more noise, I'll call the cops. Now it seems they're barely managing, renting an apartment that's too cramped for three. Even Mom, who never worked before, was seemingly forced to get a job. That's how desperate they were. Despite all the times they made fun of Dad and me as a trio, they now seem to be constantly bickering among themselves, blaming each other for their current circumstances. People rarely change, with neither dad nor me around anymore. The ones I used to ridicule, they can't help but find someone else to target. It seems they're destined to lead lives filled with both physical and emotional poverty. Meanwhile, our lives have taken the polar opposite trajectory. Despite all their mockery about dad being low income, he had actually been trading stocks for years, amassing a fortune. We only learned about this after the divorce was finalized. Dad feared that if any information leaked out, the trio would try to seize his assets, so he had decided not to mention it until the divorce was over. That's probably why he didn't mind giving up the family home. Now we're living comfortably in a new house that Dad built with his wealth. He quit his job to focus on his stocks. My husband and I have jobs too, so we're not struggling financially. We support each other while each maintaining our own financial independence. We hope to build a loving family that we couldn't have when we were young from here on out.